Welcome to the Fun Astrology and Merriman Market Analyst Saturday Financial Podcast. I'm Thomas Miller. Thanks for joining us. Of course, it's time for the free weekly newsletter published every weekend on MMACycles.com by financial analyst and astrologer, and I will say an author. I just delivered to him yesterday the audio files for the Forecast 2025 book. It is being prepared for distribution, and we will let you know when it is available. Uh, All I can say is I can't wait to do the podcast interview with him, and we live in interesting times. Let's dive into the newsletter for the week ahead, November 25th. This is being released on November 23rd. In the week review, we begin with a Wall Street Journal article from Friday. Republicans are feeling a lot perkier about the economy now that Donald Trump is on his way to the White House. Democrats, less so. The index of consumer sentiment in Republican households climbed more than 15 points in November, according to data released Friday by the University of Michigan. In Democratic households, the same index fell by over 10 points. And another article from Greg Ipp, When Two Economic Goals Collide, also in Friday's journal, there are two main planks to that Trump economic agenda, tax cuts and deregulation to bolster economic growth and tariffs to reduce the trade deficit and bring back factory jobs. The problem is that these two planks are in conflict. Faster growth and bigger budget deficits boost imports and the dollar, widening the trade deficit and making U.S. manufacturers less competitive. Tariffs dent customer spending and business confidence and put upward pressure on inflation and interest rates, undermining growth. Trump can make stronger growth or a smaller trade deficit his priority, but not both, end quote. Now, Ray's commentary for this week past, the post-election rally in U.S. stocks resumed after posting a somewhat steep trading cycle low on November 19th, well within orb of our November 15 to 18 two-star critical reversal date. The Dow Jones Industrial Average had fallen over 1,500 points from its all-time high of 44,486 on November 11th to a low of 42,938. Then it roared back to close the week at 44,296, within striking distance of its recent all-time high. The rally in the S&P and NASDAQ was not quite as strong, which means U.S. stock indices could be setting up for a case of intermarket bearish divergence next week, or even into our December 6 through 9 three-star critical reversal date, just in time for our next MMA options webinar on December 8th. That divergence of stock indices was notable on a global level. The U.S. and Australia posted nice gains last week, with the ASX making another new all-time high. But other markets posted new multi-month lows, including the Netherlands AEX, Zurich SMI, Hang Seng of Hong Kong, India's Nifty Index, and Brazil's Bovespa. Something is uneven in the world's financial system these days, which might become more newsworthy as Mercury starts its next three-week retrograde cycle this Monday, November 25th. The big story last week was Bitcoin, which came very close to $100,000 on Friday. Gold was a good story, too, as it soared to $2717 on Friday, up sharply from its 50-week cycle low of $2541 the prior week. We're still waiting on silver to explode. After dipping slightly below $30 the prior week, it remains well off its multi-year high of 3507 posted on October 22nd, 23rd. Crude had a nice rally, rising to 7151 on Friday, up smartly from its triple bottom of 6661 on Monday, November 18th. With the sun now in Sagittarius, sharp rallies would be the norm in many financial markets. Conventional market analysts will call this the annual Santa Claus rally. But we believe it has more to do with the expansive nature of Sagittarius than a belief in Santa. Now, the short-term geocosmics and a story that was in Fox Business on Friday, Barbara Corcoran reveals what will make real estate go ballistic in 2025. Quoting, But I am wondering if we will ever see a 5% mortgage rate number because anything with the 5% in front of it is going to make this market go ballistic, Barbara Corcoran said on Cavuto's Coast to Coast on Thursday. 
The 30-year fixed mortgage rate climbed closer to 7 percent this week as Freddie Mac's latest primary mortgage market survey showed that the average benchmark rate rose to 6.84 percent from last week's reading of 6.78, end quote. Ray says she is absolutely right, and this was part of our forecast 2024, which basically said that if the Democrats want to keep control of the White House, they'll need to get mortgage rates down to 5.5 percent. It didn't happen, at least yet, but it could by spring of 2025. For this week, we find the return of our old nemesis, the trickster. Mercury turns retrograde on Monday evening, Eastern Standard Time, at 22 degrees Sagittarius, traveling backwards in the sky from November 25th through December 15th. This will be an interesting three weeks for the trickster, as it will be in its detriment sign, where thoughts and ideas may be grand yet exaggerated. It also means there could be large errors in judgment and communications. Make sure when you decide to buy, you click buy and not sell on your orders. That's assuming your internet connection doesn't fail you right at the time you wish to place your order. It would also be a good policy to underestimate your facts and promises to others, and maybe even abstain from signing agreements. It's a time for discovery, not for settlements. As far as markets go, I don't expect any major reversals just because the trickster is back. Yet, keep in mind that the last time Mercury turned retrograde was on August 5th, and that is when the last primary cycle low in many markets occurred. So it could happen again, since Mercury is now turning retrograde in the fire element. Fire wants action, so it is prone to buy when prices are low. But I don't think they are that low yet in the U.S. In spite of that, our focus is more on December 6th through 9th, when Mars and Neptune change directions with the opposition between the Sun and Jupiter. Something big is likely to happen around that time, as both Sagittarius and Jupiter like things big. Big reversals often happen when two or more planets change direction close in time to one another. Now the longer-term thoughts. It's the end of an era. Pluto has left Capricorn now, where it has reigned for nearly 16 years. You might call that the age of authoritarianism, the rise of central government controls over the lives of populations, and the rise of worldwide debt as the result of excessive government spending and stimulus programs. Capricorn is associated with controls, and Pluto with debt, but also with reform, threats, and coercion. Capricorn also rules the elderly in society, as well as both the wisdom and the costs that they bring to society. But now Pluto moves into the futuristic and youthful, revolutionary sign of Aquarius for the next 20 years. Aquarius relates to new forms of energy, space travel, technological inventions, innovations, and applications. It rules outer space. Thus, we might find that we enter a nuclear age for better or for worse. On the one hand, with Pluto, the threat, we very well could see a nuclear threat, even war, and wars fought with robots and strategies involving the use of artificial intelligence. On the other hand, we could also see a pronounced effort to ban the use of nuclear weapons in war and seek world peace and more efficient sources of energy. We could experience both in the next two decades. The end of an era and the start of a new one is also taking place in the field of professional astrology and in my own personal life. The field of astrology lost one of its greats, one of our legends, this month. Michael Luton rose up to the cloud. He was one of only six astrologers to have received the highest award in professional astrology. The Marion March Regulus Lifetime Achievement for Astrology, awarded at the United Astrological Congress in New Orleans in 2012. The award is given in honor of Marion March, the Tsarina of Astrology, who was instrumental in the founding of UAC in 1986 and is the co-author with Joan McKeevers of The Only Way to Learn Astrology Books, which have been the gateway books of many of today's professional astrologers. 
Luton's role in the evolution of astrology from a hobby to a profession was profound. Not only was he a professional astrologer of over 50 years, author of several books, teacher to thousands of students, but he was also an off-Broadway playwright. He was most beloved because he brought his playwriting and comedic production skills to the astrology community. He made us laugh and cry while simultaneously elevating our consciousness with the depth of his messages within each play. They always carried the themes of current-day astrology as it relates to the human experience. He was funny, incredibly funny. He was complex. He was brilliant and original. He was an amazing astrologer and, most of all, a remarkable person who lived an extraordinary life, mostly in New York City and Paris. Luton's passing ends an era in astrology. For many, it coincides with an ending and beginning of a new era in our individual and professional lives. For me personally, I have decided to end an era and begin a new venture in my own life. I will be moving to Miami Beach, Florida in January with my wife, Antonia Langsdorf. I am excited about this new venture at this stage of my life, and excitement and inspiration are two experiences that I will always seek. I'm not selling my beautiful house just outside of Scottsdale, Arizona, just in case I want to return to my desert oasis in 2026. But I will rent it out for one year in case anyone on this list is interested. If you are interested, the contact information email is in the newsletter. I'll leave my astrology and history books here in case anyone wants to go down the path I've traveled for the past 50 years. There are a lot of treasures that have been discovered on this path. And I'm looking forward to new discoveries and sunshine and ocean breezes in Miami in 2025. Pluto and Aquarius, here we come. Drop your swords and shields and let's innovate and discover new ways to cohabitate harmoniously on this planet in this new era. A-I-R-A. And what an exciting announcement that is, and we wish Ray and Antonio the very best in their new venture in Florida. Thank you so much for listening. Have a wonderful holiday weekend for those of you in the United States. I'll be back on Monday with an abbreviated week of podcasts on fun astrology. Have a great rest of the weekend, and thank you for listening.